Hi, I thought I would give you a bit of a tutorial on just a simple nest image using one of my favorite colors uh, and changing the colors. So this image is that beautiful apricot and I find this hands down one of the easiest to change. So if you're doing a lot of composites, this is a set that I would definitely invest in because you can change the color so easily. It seems to be a tone that will take you through all the nice subtle changes of color very easily. So I'll just show you, I've actually painted on a hue and saturation layer all around the wrap. And I'll show you on the slider how beautiful the colors are when you go through them. It's, um, some of these are just beautiful and neutral. I've also increased, decreased the saturation. So they all look beautiful that we could pop some of those, uh, some of the brighter ones are a bit um, bright, but these pinks and blues look really lovely. I'm going to put her into a nest that's purple. So what I've done there, you can see the saturations down. If I pull the saturation up to where it was zero or zero there, then I've pulled that back quite a bit. Um, I've taken it what minus 36. I've also taken the lightness down 7%. So that's where it was. There we are. And I've just taken it a bit darker because the nest that I'm putting her into is a little bit dark. So you could lighten her up a little bit as well as she's going to a softer um, nest. But I'm going to make her a little bit darker because I'll show you the one that I'm popping her into is this one. So I'm going to now flatten her in that color so that that will, might bring across that the different layers. I'm going to, oh! It still did. What happened? No, it's gone into somewhere else. Wait a minute. I will just move her around because I need her in on the top. I'm going to start again. I'll just flatten that. And then I am going to grab her image and bring her across again. So free transform. So I'm just going to do control T and bring her down to the size that's going to go into the nest. There we go. And I'm going to do a mask layer and then I'm going to invert the mask. So I just paint in with my white brush at 100%. So I want to make sure, I always use a big brush so that I make sure I'm not missing any of the babies. So I start from the middle and go out. So you can already see how easy this is. As long as I get my edging and the blending nicely done, um, I mean, this shouldn't really take me too long. So I'll just get her roundabout kind of popped in there and then move her into position. Might make her a little bit smaller. Sometimes I just like to move them around and see how they look going around. So what I'm going to do now is get my black brush because I will bring that back now around the edging. So black brush, which is going to erase her off here. So I'm going to erase back to her hairline atop here. So you can see that, and I'll even get a smaller brush and go in tighter because I want to get a nice sharp edge to the top of her head. If that's the part that's going to come across over the top of the nest when I really want that to be super sharp so it doesn't look fuzzy. I'll just make it a bit bigger. So I'm just erasing all of that now. I'll go over with a bigger brush there now next. But if I erase her head there, that way I can bring in some shadows and see if see her, I'm kind of meeting up to where the um, the fluff is meeting there. So you can see how I might just end that there. I'll just go over this part with a bigger brush to make sure I haven't got any extra bits hanging around there. So then I might reduce my opacity down to 20 for my black brush. So that means I'm erasing parts of her image. So I might just start to erase some of that back so that it blends in. Well, it's a matter of deciding which one you want to keep more. More obviously this one has to come back to the leaf. So I might actually see where that's coming in. There we go. So I might even do this at 100% because I see that there's a leaf there. So what I'll, a floral leaf, yeah. And I might just erase that right back to the sharp edge. You can see how that's going to bring the two images together a little bit because I've got a little bit of a, a piece of the 
petal coming over her bottom. So it will blend those two images together nicely if you have a couple of things that come over the top. So I'll just go over the top of her head again. Make sure that's really sharp. And now I just start to figure out what I'm happy with with my blend. So I'll come down to 20%, uh, 14% maybe. And then I'll figure out which I'm preferring. So sometimes I just follow the lines of the some of the curly felts. If that's a bit too light, I might bring that back a little bit. So you can see there. I want to bring a bit of shadow in here, but I'll do that once I've got this kind of in a place where I'm happy with it. Now that's a bit dark there, so I'm just going to figure out. There we go. I'll just build in some more of the original image because I don't like the darkness that was sitting there. What I will have to do is just kind of balance those up nicely. So I might I just accidentally did one brush stroke over her face there. So I might bring back some of this a little bit so that's coming around the edges. Oh, wrong way. Wrong brush. I got the wrong one. Wrong one. Sorry. And then I've got my white brush that I'm bringing back in at 14%, just some of those edges so that around her head, around that fluff has got some coming out. It's a matter, I find it's a matter of just following the flow of some of these fabrics where um, you might blend some but then you might take away the other. So I'll see what that looks like. I might just bring a bit more. So I'm flipping between the white and black brushes to see which blend I like more. Now I'm going to get rid of some of this highlight here and um, I'm going to do that. I need a bit of a shadow up here, so I will bring in the shadow layer underneath here. I'm going to go to Curves, and it's underneath the baby now. You can see that, so Curves there. So I'm going to come out a little bit so that I can see how. Where are we? It's just deciding not to do that. I will come out, and then I'm going to have a look at underneath. I'm going to worry about that highlight later on, but basically I'm going to come in at 10%. I'm going to paint some of this curves layer back because this is where a natural shadow would fall on her head. So if her head's there, we're going to get some shadowing over here and that's, that's where you want to have it nice and dark on that side beside her head because if her head's there, it's going to be quite dark there. Not a lot of light's going to get down there, so I might even go smaller still. Just get nice and dark along the edge there. There we go. So I might do another layer on the top and just address this highlight here. I keep touching it. Um, so I'll do another curves layer on the top, which is not on the top yet, but I'll move it. So bring her down so that it's on the top and I'll just paint back at 10% that layer that I've just brought in because I'm finding that this highlight's distracting. I might go down a little bit so you can see how that's just bringing that in a little bit. I'll bring the opacity down a little bit because I just want to fix some of the imbalance with the line of the light around here. So starting to, because a lot of, not much light would get down to that bottom part of her bottom. So what I might do now is just enhance, sorry, bring these back a little bit. So I want the attention to go to her face, so I'll turn that one on and off. So you can see how the attention's going to her face a little bit more. So just going to get those shadows up a bit on here. So this is on top of the baby, so I'm going to put a bit more shadow down the side of her head there so it looks like it's really in the nest. Bring a bit more shadow around here. The other thing you can do is just pop some highlights by um, doing another layer, curves layer, which you can also do. Um, I do a dodge and burn layer, which is, I'll do it from scratch. So new fill, new layer, not solid color, new layer. There we go. New oh my gosh, that just took me forever because I normally press my button. <laughs> um, so what I then forgot to do there is new layer. This is what happens when you stop doing it. Layer. I forgot to do that. So soft light. 
Fill with growth. That's what happens when you have actions. You forget how to do it. So fill with 90%, 50% grey, and that's my dodge and burn layer, which is the one that I have as a quick button here. So what I might do with that is I'll get down to about 6% where I'm going to pop a bit of light onto areas where I feel just need a little bit of a lift just on her face, some of her eyelids there, just to match the lighting in the nest. Pop a bit of colour that might just hit that little bit there. Balance out some of the darker bits there. But I'm quite happy with how that's looking now. She's looking like she's in that nest beautifully. I think this really helps here. Um, so what I might do is just go around the edges and make sure I'm happy with how that's all looking and then I've got dark and I'm going to just darken that down a little bit there just around that leaf because if the leaf was sorry the um, um the petal if the petal was there I might get a little bit of a shadow there so you can see a little bit there how that is kind of making it feel a little bit more real like it's sitting there a bit more light popping on that Am I on 6%? There we go. And then I'm just popping a bit of light on her face there. So I'll come back out again, see how we're looking. That's looking good. I won't, I won't normally spend too much more time on it than that. So what I might do now that I'm happy is just flatten the image and I'll put a, um, a haze layer over the top. Kind of blends it all nicely together. So I'll pop that over the top usually put that on about like 20 25 percent and um, there we go I'll flatten that so then I'll, I'll do the I might just save this version uh, save that one quickly And then I'll show you how to do the circle. So what I might do, bring that upper up here. It's usually pretty easy if you've got a good background there. So what I might do, I'm kind of feeling a nice green circle might be pretty. But what I'll do is I want to fill in the edges. So I've got my, now let me just go back to it, my rectangular marquee tool. And then I delete enter. And then that's my content aware. So it's filling in whatever I'm telling is around it. So that's the easy, see how quick and easy that is. If you're finding that you've got a little bit of shadow down the bottom here, I use sometimes patch tool to fix some of the textural issues. And then I will bring those across there. There we go. It's in there. It's all it's working a bit slow today. So what I might do, I'll just flatten that. I'm going to put some a little pop of exposure down the bottom here. So that's my. I've just got a, an exposure action that will just pop a bit of color. Sorry, color light light down here. So I just put a little bit on that side of her face down the side of there. Balances that nest up nicely. I might just now that I've got that done, I might just liquefy that nest a little bit. Uh, I've got a bigger tool. Just feel like those flowers down the bottom. Just with the way she is in the nest, I, might, I just want to make those a little bit smaller. So I sort of feel like that just balances that bottom. It was a bit heavy there. So I will flatten that one. And I'll get my, there we go, elliptical marquee tool. So I will make a circle around the nest, making sure I've kind of got all the little bits and pieces and that's right in the center. So what I also want to do is pick a color. So I'm thinking that nice, I don't know, like a purpley green. There we go, it's up there. Ah. 
uh, not that green. So we'll go over here. So I'll go with that purpley color. I'll see how that looks. Oh, where's the green? The green's very bright. Don't know. So I'm just sampling with my little sampler. That's better. I might just now I need to invert my selection. I've got my color chosen. So now when I go to fill solid color, it's going to pick the color that I chose with that color picker. Now it's it's just a bit too bright for me. So, so you could do that if you wanted to. But I'm just wondering if um, another color might be nicer. So you could go back and do whichever color you wanted. But um, but that's it. 